Good morning. We are continuing to follow breaking news of a three-alarm industrial fire in North Buffalo. News 4's Nalina Shapiro joins us live from the scene this morning. Good morning, Nalina. Good morning, Joy and Victoria. Yeah, we're in the city's Black Rock neighborhood on Chandler Street. Take a look behind me. Look at all that black smoke just pouring into the street, into the air. It could be seen for probably about a mile away. We were on the 33 and could see it from there. I did find out from firefighters that it is Niagara Lubricant, the company that is on fire. It's unclear what sparked the blaze, but firefighters tell me there are chemicals inside. We have seen a ton of fire companies, first responders on the scene. A little bit about the company. It's been around for almost 90 years, since 1923. It serves Western New York and the world. They manufacture lubricating oils, industrial oils, grease, tire care products. So potentially dangerous situation. We did learn that everybody was evacuated out of the building. I tried to ask a couple firefighters if anybody has been injured. They obviously do not know right now, but we will continue to follow this breaking story. So stay with News 4 for the very latest. Black smoke billowing high in the sky. Buffalo firefighters battle flames in Black Rock. Good afternoon. We have several developing stories we are working on this noon. We begin with a massive industrial fire that continues to burn in the city's Black Rock neighborhood. News 4's Nalina Shapiro was on the scene shortly after it was called out this morning, and she joins us live with an update. Nalina. Yeah, Victoria, six hours. That's how long this smoke behind me has been burning. The fire commissioner just came over and told us that, as you can see, the conditions have gotten a little bit worse. So once again, we are warning residents to stay inside of their homes. If you live around this Black Rock neighborhood, also the Elmwood area, anywhere this smoke, if you can see it, stay inside, stay away from it because it is dangerous. This morning, powerful clouds of hazardous black smoke shot out of Niagara Lubricants, a family-run business in Buffalo's Black Rock neighborhood. Niagara Lubricants has been a customer of ours for 30 or 40 years, and uh, they're a small family business just like mine. Doug Harbison couldn't believe his eyes as he watched the nearly 100-year-old manufacturer on Chandler Street go up in flames. They're like everybody else, just trying to keep the lights on, make a couple nickels. You know, it's... Oh. It's heartbreaking. And it's worse than heartbreaking. It's devastating. What are they going to do now? The business, which employs about 30 people, has been around since 1923, serving Western New York and the entire world. The smoke is so black because inside the company manufactures oils, lubricants, and different kinds of greases. Like I said, there are vats of uh, oil, uh, grease, and other uh, explosive material in there. There's propane tanks in there. There's all kinds of things within this structure. So there were several explosions earlier. Uh, we backed everybody out immediately and went defensive. The fire the fire from the exterior. Eventually, firefighters called the airport's foam truck to help them put out the burning oils and chemicals inside. Uh, we'd like to uh, warn residents uh, in the, the perimeter of Elmwood Avenue, Amherst, and Reservation. Uh, make sure that you uh, close your windows and doors. Uh, don't be outside, uh, you know, inhaling the smoke unnecessarily. Back live on Chandler Street, as you can see, the smoke is still bellowing into the air. The commissioner came over and said it has gotten a little worse. The air conditioning, air conditions are getting worse. So again, if you are around this Black Rock neighborhood and this area, stay inside, close your windows and doors. Now, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. The owner, understandably upset, did not want to go on camera, but he again wanted to tell all of his employees that he is so sorry and obviously is devastated that this had to happen. For now, reporting live, Melina Shapiro, News 4 at noon. How oh, sad. Thank you very much, Nolina. And this neighborhood has seen its share of major fires in recent years. How concerned are the people who live nearby? News Force Melissa Holmes continues our live team coverage from Chandler Street this noon. Melissa. Well, Victoria, we're only a few hundred feet from the fire right here, and people right around me are not overly concerned about the fire. But still, hundreds of local students who are in summer school right here have been evacuated over safety precautions for the fire. And believe it or not, this area right here is no stranger to these raging fires. Now, the video that you're looking at right now, this is a four alarm fire right here on Chandler Street back in 2005. It was an arson that destroyed the old Fargo plant. Now, fortunately, the building had been vacant for a couple of years. And back in 1997, another four alarmer on Chandler Street at the GNR machinery building. And what business stood right next door to GNR and credited Buffalo firefighters for stopping the flames from spreading to it that night? 
Niagara lubricant. Now back to this morning's fire, a precautionary measure. The Buffalo schools bust more than 400 children attending summer school at West Hurdle Academy, just a few blocks from the fire, to Riverside High School and alerted their parents with an automated telephone system. Neighbors dealt with the smoke in their own ways this morning. It, the smell is getting worse. It's actually not deating right now to me and my children. I have health problems to begin with, so I get quit sick really easy. And it's just better safe than sorry, I guess. As soon as I heard toxic, I thought, oh my God, I was afraid to put my head out the door, but. But you're out here now. Yeah, because I don't see anything yet and I don't smell anything. Now again, the neighborhoods that really need to take special precautions, Elmwood, Amherst, and Reservation. You're asked to stay indoors, shut your windows, and shut your doors. I know on a day like this, everyone wants to be outside and enjoy the beautiful weather, but you're asked to stay indoors because it's still unclear how dangerous the air is and how dangerous the chemicals are. And again, there's a flare up right now. The smoke is very, very dark. The smoke is very, very thick, and the wind is shifting. And so it's really unclear which way that smoke is going to blow. Reporting live in North Buffalo, Melissa Holmes, News 4 at noon. Thank you, Melissa. And you can follow our team coverage of the fire on WYVB.com. You can also sign up for text alerts. So if something major happens near you, you are prepared for it. And this is happening right now in Black Rock, where thick black smoke is filling the skies over Buffalo. It's coming from a stubborn four alarm fire that broke out early today at Niagara Lubricants on Chandler Street. And that's where News 4's Don Postals leads off our live team coverage tonight. Don? Jackie, Buffalo firefighters have been at it all day since 5.30 this morning. Crews even had to bring in additional equipment from the Buffalo Airport and the Niagara Falls Air Reserve Station. They wanted those foam trucks because this inferno behind me, that building was full of lubricants, grease, and what have you. And it went up in flames around 5.30 this morning, causing an environmental concern for this neighborhood. There was a thick clouds of smoke that's been fouling the air since 5.30 this morning. And our team coverage continues tonight with News 4's Rachel Kingston, who has more on this very difficult battle. The blaze ignited just before 6 o'clock this morning. No one could have predicted then that it would rage on for the entire day and into the night. The plume of thick black smoke could be seen from miles away. Niagara Lubricants on Chandler Street in Buffalo has been engulfed in flames for almost 12 hours now. The building was full of oil, propane tanks, grease barrels, all extremely volatile materials. There's so much stuff in there, so much lubricant, so much oil, so much everything. And unfortunately, water doesn't put it out, it just spreads it around. And uh, the fire is deep in the building and the hand lines can't even hit it with the foam on it. By mid-afternoon, the Buffalo and Airport Fire Departments had run out of fire retardant foam. And the U.S. Air Force's foam pumper truck arrived as a backup. People who live in the area bounded by Elmwood, Amherst and Reservation have been told to stay inside and keep their windows shut. There's also concern for the welfare of the first responders who've been exposed to this toxicity all day long. Checking everybody. We just want to make sure our guys and gals are safe. So we're checking them, uh, people who were exposed to the fumes or whatever, people who are working this scene, uh, we're doing baselines on them, checking them off. They'll submit an exposure form, which is status quo for the department. Uh, it's, it's what we do to protect our guys and gals. At this point, Buffalo firefighters intend to let the fire burn out on its own. And within the last hour, we have started to see some signs of progress here. Look down the street behind me. You can see firefighters are once again using water, not the foam, to fight the fire. That's a good sign. Also a really good sign that smoke isn't quite as thick and black as it was earlier. So, you know, it really looks like, Don, maybe some of this stuff is finally starting to burn off a little bit. And they're going to wait until it burns itself out. Now, we've seen another good sign. Ladder 4 just left the scene, so fewer men are battling the blaze. And about four minutes ago, a free 
freight train went by. That's the first train that the Buffalo Fire Department has allowed to use the track since the fire broke out at 530 this morning. This is uh, not the first time this area, as you know, Rachel, has been hit by fire. All these empty lots over here at one time had industrial businesses on them. Niagara Lubricant was still in business since 1923, and many of these businesses through the years have gone up in flames. Now, News 4's Amelia Siegel tells us more now as our team coverage continues on the environmental concerns. This is nothing to fool around with. The people really have to leave the area. They need to evacuate. Fire Commissioner Garnell Whitfield advised residents to stay indoors and shut their windows. It's a scary thing, but I figure until I really smell something, I'm, you know, I mean, I got my front windows shut. I don't have any windows open on the other side of my house. This neighborhood is no stranger to four alarm fires. A blaze destroyed GNR machinery right next door to today's inferno. Initially, we had fire jump the driveway and caught on to the building, Niagara Lubricants. Uh, we made a very quick entry with hose lines. There was, a, there was danger in there because there's a lot of oil in there and uh, flammable lubricants and some propane on the first floor. But I think our quick attack in that building, knocking that fire down, really helped us out. Then, in 2005, a fire blamed on arson destroyed the Fargo plant, also on Chandler. Today, the thick black smoke and polluted water contained oils, propane, lubricants, and different kinds of greases. The smell is getting worse. It's actually nauseating right now to me and my children. It was hours before barriers were put around drainage holes to prevent tainted water from seeping into the sewer system. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation released a statement saying, in part, the DEC's main concern and role at the scene primarily relates to runoff from firefighting water. An environmental contractor has also been brought to the site and is actively working to control runoff using various spill response methods and equipment specially designed to absorb and contain spills. Now the most recent update is, is those white fabrics that saturate the oil as the water goes into the storm runoff drains have been replaced by the DEC. They were completely saturated with oil, so that is a good sign because in part it's collecting as much oil as it can. I was up there looking at those storm drains and you could still see some oil getting down into those storm runoff drains. Now I'm told by the DEC that this water flows to the Squaw Island sewage treatment plant before it is released into the Niagara River. Now from an air quality aspect, I talked to both the DEC and the Department of Health. Western New York, we don't really have the capability of monitoring air quality, but I'm also told by officials that they don't believe the air quality was bad enough to evacuate the residents. Some summer school students were evacuated from the area early this morning. And one more aspect, on from a meteorological standpoint, you can see there's a nice breeze out here now, so that's at least blowing these toxic fumes away from the residents immediately in this Thank area. Thank you, Amelia. One other thing I want to add, these Metrolink trucks behind me, those mini buses, they're bringing bringing in relief firefighters to the scene because many firefighters, as we reported on Wake Up, have been here since about 5.30 this morning. I'll have the latest as they continue to battle this fire on Black Rock later in this newscast. Now, back to Jackie Walker. Well, the day-long battle continues against what was a four-alarm fire in Buffalo's Black Rock neighborhood. News 4's Don Postles is live with the latest now from Chandler Street. Don? Jackie, we have been providing live team coverage of this massive four-alarm fire when it began during wake-up this morning. We've been streaming video on our website, WIVB.com, and here's the latest right now. You can now see the third floor of Niagara Lubricants here on Chandler Street. Firefighters are getting an upper hand of knocking it down. I think it's even been reduced from a two-alarmer, although firefighters have been called in relief firefighters. And we're going to be on the scene tonight. We're going to have the latest on our website, WIVB, throughout the night. And I'll have the latest on News 4 at 10 o'clock and on the 11 o'clock news. Now back to you, Jackie. All right, Don, thank you very much. Well, that is News 4 at 6. We hope you will join us again for the latest news coming up on News 4 at 11.